Today, what we're going to do, obviously, we can't start talking about Christmas yet, because, and even though we are putting Christmas lights up already, but, um, but you know, today is truly still Thanksgiving Day weekend. You know, it's kind of the weekend is all still here. So today, we're still going to talk about uh, being thankful. And as I was uh, thinking about being thankful, and I started thinking about this about a month and a half, two months ago, about, you know, what we would talk about on this, on this day when, when we're talking about being thankful. I started thinking about being thankful to God, thankful to our, you know, f- uh, for our church. And uh, I started trying to figure out what I was going to say. And then I ended up having a conversation with our youth directors, uh, Mac and Ryan Rosette. It's right over here. You know, so I ended up having a conversation with them and started talking about, you know, Thanksgiving weekend. And, 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 and they, they, they started sharing with me. And I've, and I've known some of their testimony before, but they started sharing to me about what God has done in their life and how thankful they are that God, what God has done, where, where they were to where they are today and the huge difference. And oftentimes that what I, I believe is this, is that we forget what God has got us through. So we, what we're going to do today is this, is they're actually going to come up. I get a chance. I'm going to go back. I'm going to sit at the back of the auditorium. I'm going to hang out there. So if anybody needs prayer or needs to talk to me afterwards, I'll be at the back of the auditorium after service. Um, but right now what we're going to do is we're going to have Mac and Ryan. They're going to come up. And they're going to share their testimony. They're going to show you the journey that they went through in their life outside of God to where their life is now in Christ and the difference that God has made and how thankful they are. And that when we don't forget to be thankful, it allows us be able to step back and truly remember what God has done in our lives. See, sometimes what we do is we just go, this is where we are today. And we don't realize, man, it's been a journey along the way. And God has been there with us every step of the way. So, but before we do that, would you please pray with me? Father, I just want to thank you so much for today. And again, Father, I thank you so much uh, again for the opportunity to be able to step back and to remember uh, what we need to be thankful for. Father, oftentimes we're thankful for material possessions, but we all know all that stuff goes away. Specifically, Father, we just want to thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, the fact that he came and paid an awful death on the cross so that we can have an opportunity to have a relationship with you, not just now, Father, but for all of eternity. And we just thank you so much for that. Father, I pray that as we today we look at uh, Mac and Ryan's life, that we're able to see the difference that you've made in their life. And because of that, Father, we understand that they had a story. And, and even though uh, uh, early on in their life, they looked like they didn't want or you know, care to listen to you, Father, they were open to it, and because of that, you transformed their eternity. And because of that, Father, we'll use that as incentive to go out into a world that needs you. See people who we normally would not think that they would need you, but, Father, we have the courage to step up, bring them to church, and through us introducing, introducing them to Jesus, you know, they can't help but fall in love with them and hopefully transform their eternity. Thank you so much, Father. And again, we praise our son in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Or for those of you who are bilingual, buenos dias. Aloha. Yay. So, so check this out. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out here today and uh, learning something about God. It's so important. Um, and sometimes, you know, we actually lose sight on being thankful sometimes. Um, so today we're here. My wife, Ryan Rosetti, she married me twice. Um, we're going to be uh, sharing with you guys uh, some of our testimony and stuff that we've been through in our lives. So uh, <clears throat> we're the youth directors for the teen ministry. They're sitting back there. Teens, welcome. Welcome. Wake up. Hello. How are you? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to be uh, sharing today, like Juan said, we're going to be sharing our testimony. So um, uh, first off, uh, we're going to do First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice. Pull out your Bibles. Oh, yeah. If you guys have your Bibles, pull them out and follow along. If you don't have a Bible, like Juan always says, or Brent, we'll be more than happy to give you guys a Bible. They're out there in the in the U, uh, Unleashed uh, store, UCC store. So uh, make sure you guys get one if you don't have one. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So our first point, if you guys want to pull out your, um, your pamphlets when you walked in today, it's being thankful without God. We were thankful at times when God wasn't in our lives. Um, so how this came about, this lovely man and I <laughs> was one summer day, February 22nd. Not summer, it's spring. <laughs> um, it was rodeo weekend, and I mean, you guys all know, you guys are on the south side, and how it is, everybody goes cruising down Irvington. So we, me and my girls went to the car wash on Irvington, and this gentleman was washing his car. <laughs> I like clean cars. <laughs> I still do, even with five kids. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we exchanged numbers, um, started, you know, going on dates, and just for the record, our first date, he told me to walk out, like, with a limp. Like, I'm like, are you kidding me? Just because I I parked in a handicapped spot. (laughs) She forgot to say that first service. 
So. And I'm like, okay, this. But then I married him, so he kept it, you know, lively. <laughs> so, um, you know, we were dating, and we kind of moved fast. We moved in together. Um, we were traveling. We're, you know, he was making good money. Money wasn't an issue. We were going to the Bahamas, Florida, California, going on cruises, shopping, just enjoying the moment of things of this world that mean nothing, yeah. absolutely nothing. Can't take them with you when you leave. But that's what we were living for. And sadly, those were the things that we were thankful for. Yeah. When we first got together, I mean, from the get-go, right out of the shoot, everything, our foundation was, was not solid. Our foundation was based on cars, money, clothes, you know, stuff like that, material things that deteriorate, that break, that have no value, really, when you need somebody to be there for you. And everything, as, as we were together going through our things, that was not even... I wouldn't consider it even a foundation. It was just Damn. something, something that we actually started building our relationship on. That was uh, what we revolved around, and that's what we needed for us to to be happy to work together, um, living together. You know, and as of course we were living in sin, we weren't married. Um, but she's like, "Hey," I was like, "Hey, let's live together." Okay, great. Let's go buy a house because we need somewhere to live. So <laughs> she's like, "Okay, let's." You know, I like that house. I'm like, that one's cheaper. Let's go buy that one. You know, I'm about saving money. And um, so we went and got the cheaper house, and we were living together and stuff, you know, having kids. And, and if you think about it, there's a, there's a movie out there. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's called Into the Storm, where um, scientists have, like, these amazing um, vehicles that they're just super duty heavy, you know, you know, sturdy with all the technology that you could ask for when you're out there looking at the storms, you know, like the tornadoes and whatnot. And her and I did a more hillbilly style. You know, it's like, hey, let's jump in this truck and go straight to that storm. We were chasing the storm because the storms were out there. It's not a matter of, of you know, if there was a storm. It's when is the storm coming. It's, it's when it's coming. And a lot of times in our relationship, we, you, we go and we were chasing those storms and we were just creating so much damage in our relationship chasing those storms. And anyway, so the hillbillies, they just jump in the back of a truck. One guy's driving with a head cam. He's like, yeah, this rocks, man, you know, and they're driving down chasing that storm and they didn't care about the consequences. They didn't care about the dangers, the risks, anything that they were taking. They just knew that they wanted to go in that direction, and they did. And the chaos and everything that comes with it, I mean, of course, it unfolded, you know, unpleasantly. They didn't die, but, you know, their truck got damaged and whatnot, so. So meanwhile, as we were storm chasing, uh, we had time to have kids. We had one. <laughs> we had two. We had three. And every when we were having kids you know and, oh kind of make things better we're gonna have it you know work out and then you know he said something I didn't like or you know I did something he didn't like and there was always a back door like see I'm out of here you're not gonna tell me what to do I was very sassy now I'm just sassy under control but he you know was very controlling like he'll say and yeah I see yeah, I mean and a lot of you guys I'm, I'm Mexican I'm Mexican and I know and none of you would have guessed my, that Oh, no, it is true. <laughs> and so um, the way I was raised, my dad was very, like, machismo. It's like, I'm the man. You're not going to tell me what to do. You do what I say and when I say it and how I say it and, and don't even think about not doing it. And that's how I was. I was very controlling, and I had a remote control of her right here, but it would always malfunction. <laughs> it never worked properly. It is just, I don't know what's going on with this thing. And Best Buy didn't have warranty. <laughs> And, you know, so, so she would get extremely mad. And I'm like, no, you're doing what I'm saying and how I do it because I went to work. I'm coming home. I'm always hungry. And so you're going to feed me. And the house better be clean. I mean, remember, we didn't have God in our lives. So this is what I thought was the approach of a happy life, happy wife. This is what it is. Um, and, and it never did. It never worked out. So she would be mad. And then she's gone. And I'm like, thank God she's gone now. Now I could go to Pizza Hut. You know, or whatever, you know, I'm just thankful for the wrong reasons. I'm thankful that, that I don't have to hear her anymore and, and deal with this anymore. And, and boom, she was gone. Every time something, I'm on my mom's house, I'm on my mom's house, you know. And I was thankful that she had a mom to go to, you know. <laughs> but for all the wrong reasons, we were thankful for all the wrong reasons. Without God, we were thankful for... Things of this world that mean nothing. They're useless. Mean nothing. And we had no meaning, no purpose, no direction. We were, we were lost souls out there and chasing storms in first john 5 19 if you guys want to flip through that or, or it's up here we know that we are of god and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one 
And sadly, Satan had us right where he wanted us. He was just, you know, the, what, I don't know those things, whatever they are, but, you know, just kind of move them. That was us. You mean like puppet? Though, yeah. There's I'm a, a real boy. <laughs> yeah. Puppet. But that's just, you know, how he had us. And he was loving it. And we were so lost and just so out of kind of the sad things. We had our kids, you know, moving in, moving out, in and out. Because that's all we knew. That's just, you know, what we did. So if you guys want to go to, um, is it on the first? I don't know if you have to flip it over to our second point, which is seeing, seeing the, the light through the storm. Seeing the light through the storm, um, Psalm 28, 7. Seeing the light through the storm, there's a verse there, Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart exalts, and with my song, I shall thank him. Um, we, we needed him, like how he's our shield. He was our strength. At this point, you know, we were split up, and I was I was living with my mom with you know our at the time we had three kids, and I would I was going in the wrong direction really fast. He would get the kids every other weekend, so what was I doing? I'm like party time. Me and my girls go out. We were clubbing, just partying, and my mom saw it and she's like, this is not, you know, the way she, she should be going. So at that point, I called it nagging. My mom was like, yeah, you need to get to church. And I'm like, oh, mom, I just got home. What do you mean church? Like, it was bad. She's and, like, do they cure hangovers? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So it, it was really bad. And I probably came hungover a few times or, you know, not even slept. But I came and, but I look at it now, my mom invited me to church because she saw where, she saw where I was going. So I was like, all right, mom, you know, I'm going to go just as sadly to shut her up. But, hey, I came, and, you know, she saw where I was going, and she was coming, and she wanted better for me. Yeah. So I decided to come to church. You know, I started coming here, and I walked in, you know, coming. It's an awesome place, and I heard this song. I don't remember the name of it, but I was bawling like a big old baby. Like, it was just kind of saying about, you know, the things that I was going through. I was, my life was a mess and what God could do for me, and I was crying like the biggest baby yeah. ever. And that's because Ever's of the music ministry. You know, God was able to use the music ministry to move through her. Um, so it, it, the music ministry moved her. So that's why it's so important. If you guys, you know, want to talk about signing up for something, it's huge. You guys might not realize how huge the impact might be in any ministry that you might be in that could serve a huge purpose in your life, in somebody else's life, by just serving and just, just stepping up. Like the music ministry that we have is amazing. Whether there's only one guitar or a drummer and a guitar, I mean, they rock it. So, I mean, and, and that's where it starts. It starts with something with a ministry, and that's what the whole entity of the church is, is working together and doing that and, and working on, you know, for God and having God use us as a tool, you know. And as we were split up, you know, she was coming here, like she said. Then myself, I, I, I have a brother who um, was invited to another church years ago and and I always knew that he was he was a godly man but him and I were never really that close because of the differences in our lives um, he was in you know I would say he thinks he's too good for me because he doesn't want to you know slam a six-pack with me or whatever <clears throat> so you know we never really hung out but he invited me to church and I said you know what I'm gonna go to church with you and he's like that's great let's go to church so you know as she's coming here to this church we were split up for probably like five to six months or something like that um, we did have three kids. Then I was at another church, and during the process of me being at one church and her being at this church, we still were learning about the same God. We were learning about the power of one God and the transformation that he can do in our lives. So through the whole process of me being at one church and her being here, you know, we, we decided to reconcile or reconcile, <laughs> reconcile. Oh, honey. Reconcile. <laughs> Whatever. But anyways, we did it. We reconciled. Okay? And um, so we were going to church, and we started coming, and we would flip-flop churches. It's like, no, we go to my church. No, we go to your church. No, we go to my church. I'll flip you for a paper rice. Let's figure <laughs> oh, this really out. I really did do that. Let's figure this out, you know, because I know we need God, but it doesn't matter where we go because the power of God is everywhere. It's with everyone. So, so we decided to say... We're, okay, let's go to this church. We met with Pastor Juan. Wait, we before we met with down. Pastor Juan, we already moved back in together. Yeah, we reconciled. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we moved back in together. And 
as we were coming to church, we realized something is still wrong. Yeah. We're we were, trying to we do the same sin. thing, expecting different I mean, results. I mean, as the, the, you know, we were living in sin. That's just the bottom line. Yeah, we were so, living in sin, and I was like, uh, we could pray about it later, you know? <laughs> But we did I, lots of praying. <laughs> so a lot of prayer. You know, as we were realizing we're still living in sin, doing it wrong, even though we were going to church, it doesn't make it okay. So we met with Pastor Juan and we're like, yeah. we want to do things right. Like, what do we have to we do? We want to get married. And, you so, know, she was all, we're going to have this wonderful, big old, mm, elaborate wedding. There's this limousine I saw down the street over there. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I want to get married, you know, thinking about next year. And Juan's like, oh, no, absolutely not. And we're like, he's like, if you guys are going to do it right, you either sp move out you know still be together but you have to move out or you need to get married now and we was like what yeah. like this guy's crazy i knew he i'm was like crazy. hey man we so, gotta get married today i'm like <laughs> <laughs> so in two days we met with him on a thursday we got married on a sunday yeah. like our we called our family like we're getting married we were together for like six seven years and i'm like why <laughs> have, two days i have why a sister now? in new mexico and i was like hey guess what we're getting married on oh really that's great you know send us invitation no no you don't understand we're getting married like on sunday <laughs> yeah and you know leave it up to a mexican to procrastinate right i'm like hey don't worry come over we're, we'll wait for you <laughs> she had a six-hour drive <laughs> so we did we got married in two days and it's, it still wasn't easy you know what i mean we still had our issues oh, but yeah. we had god now and it was so right. different to know that our foundation was was solid we yeah. knew who that we were trying the, to please the foundation the... was now considered a foundation because a foundation you want to make sure that a foundation is going to be there and it's going to hold you know no matter what comes your way because something's coming um, so that's, that's what I was saying. Like before it was not a foundation because it just deteriorated. And obviously, you know, with our differences and we split up and, you know, with kids and problems and everything in life, you know, but now that we're back together, we have the right foundation and we wanted to do it right. And it wasn't easy. It was still hard. Uh, we would go still have problems. to seek wise counsel at times because the D word came out a lot. Y'all know what the D word is? Divorce. <laughs> Two syllables, divorce. <laughs> so it did. It came up a lot. We went to go, um, you know, seek wise counsel. We talked to them. And I remember one specific time um, they told us, you guys, God's going to use you guys, and your guys are going to do something big. And I'm like, yeah, right. This mouth's crazy. Amazing. I can't even stand my husband. I'm like, whatever. You know, and I, I didn't think about it then, but to see, like, where he has got us now, it is. It's Ooh, amazing. Process. And there was you know the slide there's a a storm but there was a light at this point you know we were just storm chasing we were still in the storm because it wasn't easy guys but we saw the light yeah. at the end of the storm and that's like ah oh, there's the light and it was it was a sense of peace at this point um in a proverbs 27 17 if you guys want to flip to that iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another lean on each other like as Christians, we're supposed to just, you know, hang out with each other, give each other godly advice. There's been so many times where I would, we would be in a fight, married, and I would call, you know, there was three girlfriends, uh, good Christian um, ladies I would call. And, of course, I'm like, you would not believe I'm active. And they're like, no, Ryan, like, you're wrong. You need to fix it. I'm like, the phone dropped. Like, I don't know what's going on. She's like, hello? No. <laughs> yeah. You're breaking up. What do you mean I need to fix this? T-Mobile. <laughs> Did... Did you not just hear what I said? A, B, C, and they're like, Ryan, you know, and but they wanted what was best for me. In the past, I would call some of my girlfriends and like, yeah, I'm at this. Come out with us. All right. That's what I wanted to I hear. I mean, you want that, that sense of, of somebody oh, yeah. to side with you and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he needs to brush his teeth more often, girl. I understand. <laughs> you know, but, and just be like, whatever the case may be. You know, you want that, that friend that's always going to side with you. But really, if you think about it, a lot of times doing the right thing is the hard the thing. Hard thing. Even if it means to have to swallow your pride and step out of your comfort zone and say, okay, I'll work on this because ultimately it's with God first and foremost and then with my wife. So there was a lot of times we've been through many counseling sessions where, you know, before I'm like, I am not going to get counseled because my dad said that I'm the man. Okay. And my dad's been married for this long, even if he is miserable. No, but I'm just kidding. He's not miserable, but, but you know what I mean? So, so it didn't matter. So I was like, no, I'm, I'm the pride gets in your way, you know? And, and uh, yes, I do take a medication, make medication that makes me happy. I remind him every day. Um, and you know, but still, so a lot of times, you know, God uses doctors and medicine also to help balance us out as well. So me being the prideful person that I am, it's like, I don't want to see a doctor. I don't, I don't want to know what's wrong with me. I don't want to have to, you know, take a medicine to make me 
feel better or whatever. But ultimately, that's true with, with a lot of us. I'm sure that we would have to step out of that comfort zone and share that stuff and, and, and seek wise counsel. Because if you seek wise counsel, like I said there, iron sharpens iron, so one man will sharpen another. I mean, and that's what we need sometimes is to get that good godly counsel. And somebody to hold you accountable. You know, people, they love you. They want what's best for you. Just go to the right people. Make sure you're going to the people who, who are going to give you the good godly advice. Because it really does. It helps. They want what's best for you, for our family, for our kids. So lean on each other. Don't be prideful. Go to somebody. And, you know, at the time, we didn't want to go to people. We're like, they see us traveling, doing this, this, and that. You know, from the outside, we, everyone probably thought, you know, we were jacked up people. They knew we didn't have it all mm -hmm. together. But, Until they needed something. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we were so like, oh, no, we can't let them know our business. But, you know what, it was the best yeah. thing for us to let people in to help us because we yeah. couldn't do it on our own. And in that storm, there's, you know, you'll see that light and, and you know, you'll get, get, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So let's go ahead and move to the third note there, the third point. Graceful, grateful God is faithful. And then uh, the type, the text there is going to be Ephesians 3 verses 20 to 21. Ephesians 3 verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Yeah, and this is like really true because the Bible can't lie. So, with that being said, um, Last year, her and I were like through a really tough, like horrible, horrible financial time um, for almost a year. It was probably like 10 months. And um, it felt like five years. It, yeah, it, was, was, it was pretty scary. You know, and a lot of you guys know I'm an auctioneer. I do car auctions. Um, so I had to really slow down today because usually when I have a microphone on, I want to go really fast, about 100 miles an hour, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, I'm going to slow it down a little bit. But um, so, so I, I was, I'm self-employed. I provide auction services, and, and I was working like four days a week, the four different auctions, lost one auction. You know, you know things kind of slowed down. Then I lost another auction. Um, and then I was only working two days a week, which, you know, some people were like, dude, I want your job, man. But with my job, with two days a week, I mean, we barely had enough money to be broke. Like, we didn't even have enough money to be broke. We were just, it was that bad. Our heads were barely above water. We are, we have four kids, and, you know, we're, everyone's always at our house. We had to tell our kids, no, we could barely feed our own family so much, have other, we truly ate rice and beans, like, for dinner. Like, we were totally down and out, and it was yeah. the scariest thing No more ever. cable, turn off all the lights. One shower a week. He is lying. Do not flush the toilet unless it's really bad. <laughs> I mean, it was tough. It was tough. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. But we had to sit our kids down and, and give them a, a huge life lesson on, you know what, sometimes life doesn't turn out the way we want it to. And sometimes things happen through the process to where you could actually use it and grow stronger together as a family. Um, and that's exactly what happened. We were actually, I was grateful because, you know what, now we had more family time. You know, I'm home more, I'm doing more with the kids, and I'm hanging out with the kids, and, you know, and, and a lot of times, stress from work, I just couldn't handle it, you know, and giving leftovers to the kids of what I had and whatever, um, and so there was more time that we had to spend with each other, but yes, I was the light patrol. The light was on, I said, who left the light on? Turn it off, you know, and I will say this, if you really want to save money, don't ever turn on your lights, because <laughs> our bills were cheap. <laughs> but we made room for God in our heart. We totally made room for him so we were able to get through that storm in the past without God there was no way the stress would have came down and I would have went through out the back door he would have been happy I left he would have been thankful for the wrong reasons we would have never have made it but I remember being a mess calling my girlfriends crying like are we gonna have to move like we can't do this our cable like it, it was horrible no but internet knowing when I, he would, you know, at times I would just be crying to him and he's like, babe, God has our back. Like, we're going to be okay. And just to know that I could, of course, lean on my husband and see my husband just, like, get us through. It was so comforting to know, like, we are, you know, we are going to make it. Like, you know, we have a beautiful family. We have five kids. And Grateful God is faithful. I mean, that's the text. Was, so, so as she said, and she said this, she said, make room. Make room in your heart. Imagine this. You have a garage at your house or your carport. And um, somebody just says, hey, I got this super 
awesome, brand spanking new car that I'm just going to let you have. I'm just going to give it to you. It's yours. And you're like, really? Well, where's the cameras, the hidden cameras? You know, you're not going to believe it, right? But no, no, here, take your car. And you have your garage. But what do you have to do in your garage? But in your garage, you go, you look inside there, you're like, man, where's this brand new car going to fit? You got bikes and, well, I got mattresses in mine. Um, you know, entertainment centers. You just got a big mess in there, huge mess. What, are, what, are, what is this process that you're going to have to do to make sure that you're actually going to make your car room and available to you in your garage? You're going to move things around, rearrange, pull things out that are unnecessary. Same thing with your heart, with your relationship with God. Rearrange things. Pull things out that's not necessary, that's not going to make you stronger in your relationship with God. you got to rearrange what's in there. Because if you have a brand new car and your garage is full with junk, your car is not going to fit in there. Same thing is true with God. You don't have room in your heart. God's not going to be able to get in there. You got to make room for him to be able to go in your heart and work to you. And some of you may be in the storm right now knowing I, I can't get out of it. We were there. You can. You just have to 100% wholeheartedly live your life for God. Give it to him. Because once you give it to him, you have that peace. And it makes it so much easier to get through that storm. Because storms are going to come. We all know that. It's not if they come, it's when they come. But once you give your life for God, it's amazing to know what he can get you through. Yeah. You know, you hear people say it like, yeah, whatever. I remember at that time when I was in the storm, I'm like, they're just crazy, whatever. They don't know my story. But truly, like, I'm here today telling the story because I, if I could save one person to go through what we went through or know, just lean on God, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It could Sometimes save. it is difficult. It is difficult. Um, I remember when things started turning around, and it was, uh, it was December. And, um, you know, Christmas is around the corner. Of course, you want to give your kids gifts and stuff, but it's like, you know what? There's far more important, valuable things in life than something kids could unwrap. Um, I grew up poor, you know, so I know what it was like to have hardly anything. Um, so possibly that's probably why I was so bad when I got older. But, um, you know, so with that being said, you know, you want to teach your kids and use it as a, as a learning tool. And, and that's what we did with our family. We grew, we grew stronger together. And in December, that's when it all started turning around because we had put it in God's hands. And remember, it was like nine months, maybe almost close to 10 months where we were struggling, rice and beans, couponing, and just, I mean, it was, it was one struggle after the other, after the other, after the other. And then the next thing I know, my phone rings and I get this, this call saying, hey, Mac, we're going to start this new auction. We need an auctioneer. You're bilingual. It's, uh, I'm like, cool, I'm in, man. When does it start? January 6th. I'm like, dude, are you serious? That's great. That's the best day of the year. Really? Why is that? Because it's my birthday. I'm like, we're going to have a rocking auction, man. It's going to be bad. You know, January 6th, my birthday, you know. And I, <laughs> so I was like, cool. So then one thing, boom, I got another job. Then that auction expanded, and they wanted me to stay there. And, I mean, just surrendering it wholeheartedly and unconditionally to God. It was amazing to know that not only did we have a good Christmas, but we had each other. We had God in our lives, working through our lives, and, and, and not just through that, but God also used us through the process because we were serving. We were in different ministries, and we were stepping up and continuing to do. We weren't all, hmm, the corner over here, all sad. I sometimes Hopefully. was at home, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was, but you know, it's well, every other month or something. I don't know. But, um, but too, you know, we have a picture of our family, but, you know, our, our family, our kids, they're healthy. They're not sick. They're not in the hospital. They that's, could, that's us. They could run. You know, at times when you hear those annoying, like, be quiet. At least we have kids who are healthy enough to run in the house who can make that noise. You know, we had each other. And when you we kind of think, you, you think, oh, I need money. I need this. I need that. We were miserable when we had that. Now that we have God and we have each other with all these storms, this is the happiest we have ever been. True ever. that. And what's really amazing, God is so faithful. This is the truth. Um, oh, Ninja, did you see that? I caught it in the air. Um, God is faithful. And it, I'm so grateful that God is faithful because through the whole process, making a certain amount of money when I had all these jobs to when I was working much less... It was, it was like we had more money than what we did when I was working more. It was, it was, it was beyond that. I mean, it was hard to wrap our head around. It's like, and that made us more faithful with God because it's like God's got our back. Well, but baby, trust me, 
It's in God's time. It's going to happen. When it happens, we, it, we have to let it, leave it to God. And he will, you know, make it happen on his time, not my time. Because if it was my time, I lost my job Tuesday, Wednesday. Guess what? Hey, I need a job, and I'm going to, and I'm going to have a job. They're like, instantly. Wouldn't it be that cool? You know, like the million buck guy, the commercial, the genie, they're so literal. You guys seen it? Yeah, a million bucks here. Oh, there, take care of the problem. Our kids also, they saw us. They went through the storm with us. So, you know, we're also teaching our next generation, our kids, to when the storms come, who, first and foremost, who to lean on God, you know. And Absolutely. then I had my husband, he had me. And, you know, at times the kids, they got stressed. We talked to them, but at least they're going to know how to handle the storm when the storm comes. At least we, we hope we're teaching them a good example. And, and people, they, they'll see it at times. They're just like, man, you know, this is tough. Am I ever going to get through this? You guys will get through it and you know i just got a call last week from my brother it was like just so sweet i told mac oh he made my day he's like you know what sister i just wanted to call and tell you that you know our childhood it was rough and and just to see what we went through and just like you and mac and like you inspire me he's like you're a, you try so hard to do the right thing you're like a good like christian woman i'm like thanks brother and i do i try my hardest and we try our hardest to do what's right. Is it easy? No. Do people turn their backs on you? Yes. Well, they think you're, oh, she's too snotty. Or, oh, she's, you know, Christian, whatever. But you know what? I, I'm pleasing God. That's all that matters to me. As long as I'm pleasing him, every, everybody else comes second. So just try to do your best and give your life to God. He'll do wonders. He'll do wonders for you. And we're living proof that once you wholeheartedly give it to him, man, it's awesome. It's a peaceful feeling. Amazing. Yep, she's, she's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just right. so thankful so, for everything he's done for us and, it, and with our imperfections because we are jacked up people. That's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> like, Getting we're right not, with God is yeah, it's a process. Not, it is a process and it's, it's difficult. But if you're not sure whether or not you are living your life right for God or there's questions that you may have on you know, certain things that are in your life that you might want to change. We do have a care team and Pastor Juan's back there if you want to meet with him and you want to be baptized or if you don't know if, if you want to be baptized and you have questions about that, Pastor Juan is back there for prayer, for anything you may need. You can um, come talk to us. Talk to us. Talk to any anybody here at the church that's in the, you know, directors here. So um, with that being said, thank you guys for coming out here. Let's go ahead and close in prayer and uh, we'll let you guys go. So <clears throat> Father God, I just really want to thank you so much for today, Father. Thank you so much for this opportunity again for second service, um, for my wife and I to be able to teach and share our love for you uh, to them. And thank you again, Father, so much for all that you do in our lives and each and every one of our lives that are here today, Father. And I just pray and ask that our hearts would be ever opened and that we would be able to take something amazing from this uh, uh, testimony that we shared and that they could apply it in their lives. Or if there's something else, Father, or someone that, that does have questions about whether or not they're living right for you, that they could just uh, seek answers from wise counsel, Lord, and surrender to you. So thank you again so much again for all that you do for us. In the name of your precious son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys have a great rest of your week. Thank you.